it's the first of first one of the year and hopefully we'll get more and it's like and no I am not a superstitious person and of course what better way to celebrate Friday the 13th but to review the first entry in the Friday the 13th franchise Friday the 13th hey I want to hey, I've been looking forward to reviewing this for a while now so might as well so Friday the 13th is a staple in horror it is that movie that everyone talks about, everyone knows, and of course, it's the famous the famous trivia question in Scream that Drew Barrymore got incorrectly. This movie is iconic, which is why it's sad to say it's not my favorite in the franchise. <laughs> This movie is actually probably, if I had to make a list that's from worst to best, is about in the middle. <clears throat> so, like, I know, I know. Blasphemy for me to say it's not my favorite, but it's not. But it, that doesn't make it a bad movie. It really isn't. It's just when you when you got about a, 10 to 11 more entries in this, you're eventually going to get something better. And this movie is still pretty good. So the story is, a camp has just, oh, Camp Crystal Lake has just opened back up, or is start about to be opened back up. Mr. Christie, the owner, has a group of college students making, or rebuilding the camp to make it presentable for the kids. Unfortunately, someone is going out there and trying to sabotage the whole thing by killing the counselors one, at a, one after the other. And of course there's the legend of Jason who was a boy that drowned in 1957 and of course two counselors died the, year, the next year. This is pretty much a whodunit movie. It is also a psycho knockoff when you think about it. But it Ha it almost has its own identity and that and that's the thing this movie if you watch it along with the other ones it's kind of an outlier it it's so weird to watch when especially when the later ser the later entries get more out there like it almost feels like this there's no way this movie fits with the rest of it and it's true but it is required viewing, especially if you want the story of when, especially when we get Jason later on in the series. And this movie's just a good time. It's a fun time. I'm not going to get into all the tidbits or, or every detail or the backlash it got, so Skull and Ebert, because we all know it. Everyone who's who is a horror fan, a fan of this franchise, knows the story about everything about this movie. I'm just gonna give my thoughts. <laughs> so start off with characters. They're not memorable, or at least half of them aren't. Of course, we know Alice, we know Adrian King, of course we know her boss, Mr. Christie. We also know Kevin Bacon, of course, and we know Ralph and Betsy Palmer. Those are the ones that we remember because, well, one, Adrian King is is the final girl, Mr. Christie's the boss, and he kind of has the most laughable death. Ralph is Ralph, Betsy Palmer is amazing, and of course Kevin Bacon is Kevin motherfucking Bacon. There you have it. But then you got the other half of the cast. You got Annie, who's pretty much the red herring final girl. You think she's going to be the one we follow, but she ends up being the first victim. Like I said, psycho knockoff. Then we got the jokester. I don't remember his name. We got another guy who's pretty much the last guy, last person to die in this, in this movie, and I don't even remember his name. We also got another person who sleeps with Kevin Bacon, who gets a pretty good kill, and we got another one who's name who plays Strip Monopoly, and I don't even remember her name. This move, but, and I think that's kind of the issue. It's like you get 
these characters, some of them are memorable, mostly because you know who they are. You you kind of start knowing who they are pretty easily. Whether it is because one's the final girl or, or the other's Kevin Bacon. The issue, but when you have later entries where, yeah, sure, those characters can be one-dimensional or, or stereotypical, you kind of remember who they are. You, some of them you remember their names, if, if they had names, or if you look at a picture, you immediately know who it is and which entry they're from. That's kind of not what you're going to get with this movie. If you show me one of the, one of the ones that I didn't name, you're, I'm, you're not gonna know you're not gonna you're probably gonna get the wrong entry is what i'm saying it's like it's not it's it is they're not some of them are not that memorable but you know who is memorable other than ralph betsy palmer betsy palmer is amazing in this movie she is of course pamela Voorhees, aka jason's mom betsy palmer only took on this role because she wanted to buy a new car and she even said the script was a piece of shit. However, that doesn't mean she sleepwalks through this movie. She gives it her all. Holy God is she good in this movie. Like she is terrifying in this movie. When she finally appears, she you immediately know she is the killer, but she does this kind of feign kindness or what she or what you believe is at genuine kindness but you can tell she is this close to snapping like you can tell she's got some skeletons in her closet and it is it is pretty she is pretty scary in this especially when she does go off the deep end and start trying and starts trying to kill adrian king or alice she but at the same time she's not like an indestructible killer she's not busting through doors although I still question how she was able to toss someone who's about the same weight as she is through a fucking window but whatever it's a slasher movie I wanted to I wanted to let that slide she is kind of a real person though she does get smacked around quite often <laughs> like Alice beats her around a couple of times and she does try and she does try to just chase this person and she can run out of breath she's more of this real kind of serial killer sometimes they succeed in killing the person sometimes they don't and that and that's what's interesting about her she is a very real per she does she is a person she is a real person she is also a very sympathetic one you understand why she's doing this and you can kind of sympathize with why she's doing it. She thought she lost her son and she blames the camp and she feels like the only way to prevent this from happening even though she is or happening ever again even though she is the one causing it is to pretty much sabotage it and kill people. That is what she's been that is what she would, believes. Now I have a theory on this which is that Pamela Voorhees because, was the one watching Jason. We all know the story. Jason drowned because two counselors went out to have sex. Pamela Voorhees was the cook, <clears throat> was the cook at the camp, but she couldn't watch her son. However, I think she's lying, or at least, or at least she's telling her what she believes to be the truth. When I think the real truth is, she was the one watching Jason because she didn't trust any of the other counselors. The other thing is she was having an affair with Mr. Cr with the original Mr. Christie. So when he shows up, he's making the moves on her and she falls for it and goes off to have sex with him. With the, and not watching Jason. And that's what happens. But because Jason survives and is like just swims to the other side, they can't find his body and she believes he's but whatever reason she believes he's dead and she but because the guilt is so is too much for her to bear she blames the counselors more than she blames herself because she feels like that's the only way she can get past it 
that's my theory. I'm sticking with it. Now, another, but that doesn't negate just how awesome Betsy Palmer is. And she eventually came around and started liking this movie and realizing the impact she had on it. How, or even the, whether it was the franchise or on, or on hor the horror genre in general. Without her, we wouldn't have Jason later on. And for that, I thank her. Now, the music is good. It is, it is like the rest of the movie, a psycho knockoff. It is got a lot of strings. It amps up when things get scary. But it is quiet when it needs to be quiet. And Harry, and Harry Manfred, Manfredini is the go-to guy for this franchise. You can't it's like when you think of the Friday the Thirteenth soundtrack, he's the he's the one you go he's the one you think about. It's just he he really it's clear he really loves this franchise and really loves making the music for each entry and each entry does sound different uh, when when the situation calls for it <laughs> or not the situation but depending on what the tone of the of the movie is at that time. Uh, the gore effects are great. The gore effects are fantastic. Tom Savini is a master at gore effects. He used to be a war photographer for uh, during Vietnam. He and he uses that expertise, especially having seen a lot of dead bodies, to really try and make the gore effects as real as possible, which is why you get more of sim kind of simpler kills, like a slit throat, arrow to the neck, an axe to the face. You get those, but they they are believable. You can actually this these are these aren't kills done by a hulking monster like Jason. This is done by by a much smaller person. This is done by an actual person. So it is. So it is possible that these kills, that's probably why these kills look so good, even even though they're very, very simple. Would and, but because but this is kind of also what got Tom Savini's name on the map, other than Maniac. Another thing uh, is the camera work is fine. It's there it's very simple. It's not trying to be intricate, it's not trying to do anything fancy. It just it gives the shots that it needs and able to convey the atmosphere when it needs to. Uh, of course, the camera work involving going from Pamela Voorhees' point of view is pretty good, too. Even though you kind of start figuring out, even though, like, the moment she appears, you kind of figure out it's her just by looking at her hands. But it is still... It is still pretty good because you are seeing this, like some of the movie through the eyes of the of a predator. And she's a predator. She's stalking her prey because they're in an air in her territory basically. But if there is one issue I have, is some scenes drag on too long. I understand trying like they're conveying the whole building up suspense. That's fine. Those scenes are fine. It's more the scenes where that don't require, that aren't really building up suspense. Like the scenes with Mr. Christie where he's in the diner. He, it doesn't need to be as long as it is. It, it felt very long. There's, he's not about to be killed there. All, all it could have been is like he just, he's leaving the diner and then he's off off to try and get uh, and he's riding back off to his Jeep. That's when you can start stretching the scenes out. There are just times where the scenes really didn't need to be as long as they are. And, and I think that really kind of hurts the movie a bit and it's also kind of why I consider it more in the middle than one of my favorites. That doesn't mean this, like I said, this movie's not bad. It's good. It is good. It is, and it's a comfort movie for me. I watch this movie quite often because it is a fun time. They're like, and it's pretty much what what this movie does is have a good time. 
and sometimes that's all you need you don't need anything fancy you don't need anything to help you think you just need you just need to let off some steam and watch a horror movie that's what i do that's what i always that's why i put on friday the 13th or halloween or nightmare on elm street 2 i do it because i just want a good time which is why i get friday the 13th the original a bloodtastic slasherific 7 out of 10. This movie is a lot of fun. The editing could be could have had a little work done. The music is memorable. The characters are half and half. Betsy Palmer is amazing in this movie. Kevin Bacon is of course cool. And the gore effects are really really awesome. And but it's an it's an iconic movie especially for us horror fans because it helps bring helps build up the legend that it would eventually be jason and of course we'll get to that when we get when on the next friday the 13th but if you're wondering where you can find this it is a little bit difficult especially if you're trying to stream it, i know it's on amazon prime you can also get it on hulu if you have the stars package which i don't recommend However, you can get it on YouTube for about maybe 10 bucks, maybe even less if you want to purchase it, even less than that if you want to rent it. However, for me personally, I own three copies of this movie. And boy, are they were they worth it. This, of course, is the 2003 Deluxe Edition with the uncut version, which is the one I've watched, that I got when the remake was coming out. This, unfortunately, I don't think is actually available anymore. It's not run. There's no uh, no sale of it, so you're out of luck. However, I also have the eight movie collection, especially if you want to get something for about twenty bucks, maybe maybe five bucks more than that, where it has only the first eight movies because this was during the rights issue that between Paramount and New Line Cinema. So, if you're going to get Friday the 13th, you're only going to only going to get the first eight movies which have the Friday the 13th title and not the New Line Cinema ones like Jason Goes to Hell or Jason X. But the one I did watch or the version I did I did watch for this review is the Shout Factory or the Scream Factory version that comes with the Friday the 13th movie Blu-ray collection. This is actually a really good restoration, very crisp, very clean, and plenty of special features. Even if it is kind of the same features that you see on the others, there are still a couple of bonus extras. And I do recommend the, the collection itself. Scream, Sh Scream Factory or Shout Factory is a really good company that does that loves making restorations of movies including horror and I and I have bought more than my fair share of them now they are hard to come by but you can actually find this on Am you can find the collection on Amazon for about a hundred dollars I think even less than that now but you would have to check yourself well that's it for me guys if you like this video please let me know in the comments below hit that like and subscribe button and please remember I'm on Twitter letterbox and slasher at the culture critic and I'm also on twitch.tv slash Aiden King 30 where I stream where I stream video games every Monday and Friday and I'm of course Adam the culture critic I get scared because I don't care and please ha have a safe Friday the 13th especially during the these trying times and remember and remember to wear a mask, because if you don't, you're doomed.